You know, the title for this slasher really works because on one hand, it's a movie where you follow the killer and it makes you sit and stew in his dark, violent nature. But also, it's a really violent movie that makes you spend a lot of time walking in nature. Like a lot of time. But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500. But seriously, In a Violent Nature is about Johnny, a slasher killer, an undead, vengeful spirit that goes on a quest to retrieve his mother's necklace from a group of partying campers. And he brutally murders a lot of them along the way. How's it going, everyone? Welcome again to the Cobwebs channel. My name is Daniel. And when I heard about this movie, I was intrigued, but definitely skeptical because I knew it was a movie where you actually follow the typical slasher character, the Jason Voorhees of this movie, for pretty much the whole time. And that definitely sounds interesting, like an interesting deconstruction of the slasher genre, but also I worried that it would be boring, that you would just be following a guy walking around the woods. And that's definitely what I heard about this movie, so I was prepared for it. But I admit it did become sort of a forbidden fruit to me because when I looked up showtimes for this movie, it was showing that it wasn't going to be playing anywhere near me. Now, I want to thank IFC Films and Shudder for actually sending me a screener for this movie, my first ever screener that I got. So that's really awesome. But it actually did end up playing in theaters near me. So I went and saw it in theaters last night, but still I'm very thankful to have received that screener. But yeah, I ended up being super excited for this movie, although skeptical, but let's talk about what I liked about this film. And first of all, that my worries that this would just be watching a guy walk around the woods were not founded. I did not think. I found there was always something going on in this movie movie, the film finds a way to build storytelling through the whole film, although many times it's small, fairly insignificant stories, it feels like, but there's always something to follow. Very little of the walking around in the woods is aimless walking. I was actually impressed that the movie quickly and simply sets up a goal for Johnny, our main slasher killer, and that he has to retrieve his mother's necklace. It's the one thing that can put his soul at rest and just having a goal for our main character helped a lot but also there's just always people around there's something happening for him to be watching for him to be interacting with I also worried that this movie would have very little dialogue because well I, I know a lot of people kind of consider dialogue less cinema to be like cinema in its purest form I like dialogue in movies, and when a movie doesn't have dialogue for a long time, sometimes I struggle with that. That's not the case in this movie. There's actually a lot of dialogue. There are characters. There's conversations. Just a lot of the time, you're seeing them from a distance, right? The movie's not exactly a point of view film where you're just watching from his eyes, which I was glad about because that would make the camera work a little bit more boring. The camera work is very interesting. There's a big variety and a lot of different kinds of shots, beautiful long takes. I also like that we get to see the slasher killer because he looks awesome, but more on that in just a little bit. And with the characters that surround Johnny, our campers, the movie definitely finds ways to simply set up, well, simple character dynamics between them that are just interesting enough to keep you engaged. So while I worried that the movie would be boring, I never found that to be the case. I was never for a second bored in this movie. I was always intrigued, interested, but also relaxed and just enjoying beautiful kind of ambient atmosphere. I've heard this described as an ambient slasher, and I think that is pretty accurate. Now, it's a Canadian film. It was filmed in Ontario. 90% of the movie is outside in nature, in the woods, and something about me I do love the outdoors and I love the woods. I love to take hikes through the woods. And this movie really gave me that feeling. The sound design is such a hero in this film. Like, it's just so beautiful. You just, there's no musical score, by the way. So the movie just really makes you sit in the reality of a slasher film without the flash of a normal film. So there's no score. You just listen to birds chirping, the sounds of the woods, the tromping through the leaves as our character is walking. So it is such an immersive experience. This film is such an interesting deconstruction of the slasher genre in like the most literal sense. Now, I am a huge fan of slasher films. So for me, I was fascinated by that aspect of it, the way it takes a very typical slasher plot, but effective slasher plot, and just 
flips the perspective. I thought that was such a brilliant thing to do because something that people will talk about a lot with slasher films, particularly sequels in long running franchises, is eventually you feel like the slasher killer has become the real star. Freddy Krueger becomes the real star of that series. And yes, there are characters you follow, but everyone going to that movie is going to see Freddy Krueger to see him kill people. That's why you're there. And this movie says, okay, if that's why you're there for a slasher film, that's all we're going to give you. We're just going to give you the killer. We're gonna give you him killing people. And that's it. And honestly, it's almost hard to believe that nobody has thought about doing that before because it's such a brilliant thing. And I thought it worked so well because the character of Johnny is actually a great slasher character. They do a phenomenal job setting up his lore, setting up his backstory. He's got a great look before he gets a mask and after he gets a mask. Both of them are fantastic looks. So I was always happy to be watching Johnny because he just looked so cool, which is important. And not all slasher movies accomplish having a great looking killer for sure. But this is one that absolutely does. Johnny's got a good lore, a backstory that is somewhat sympathetic. And that's another aspect of this character I loved. While he's got a sympathetic backstory and the movie begins with his point of view and making you identify with him as your main character and that you're just there to watch him kill these people that we barely know in the background, the kills are so horrific and Johnny is so brutal that at a certain point, your feelings about that change. You're no longer like, yeah, we're going to watch Johnny kill people, but rather it's something horrifying and you no longer identify with Johnny in any way. So the movie just makes you sit with this absolute monster. And it is uncomfortable and a little bit scary. Like, I wouldn't say I was scared in the movie, but you do just feel this absolute element of discomfort that you are there from the perspective of an absolute monster. The movie is not a thrill ride in the way most slasher films are, and it's going to alienate some people for that. It's not like this fun, thrilling experience, a roller coaster ride that a lot of people want horror movies to be. It rather makes you sit in the dark reality of what normally delivers you a thrill ride. Rather than being with characters and rooting for them to escape and feeling that intensity, it just makes you be in the most horrific perspective. And I thought it was so effective for that. I, I, I listened to an interview with the director, Chris Nash, and when he was asked what films influenced him, you expect him to say like, Friday the 13th, part three, just before dawn, the burning, something like that. He doesn't. He says angst, this German film about a serial killer, and Gus Van Sant's Elephant. So he's looking at movies that force you to sit with an absolutely horrific character. I do think this film is at least somewhat an exercise in pushing an audience and seeing how far they will go, how much kind of slow building story they will take, how long they will sit with a kill scene that lasts a really long time, or any scene that just lasts a really long time and forces you to be in the most horrific perspective of it. This movie is pushing the audience, and when you do that, you will undoubtedly push some people away, but the people that really respond to what you're doing will absolutely love your film because you went for something very unique, very different, a different kind of experience. Some people will really appreciate that, others won't. If you can't tell, I'm someone that really appreciated that. I loved this movie. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so interesting and unique. But I also did find it ambient and relaxing for a lot of it. I loved walking through these woods with Johnny. I loved all the tiny little storytelling beats that it weaves all throughout. I thought it did it so well. I thought the actors were competent enough. They're not amazing characters, but it gives you just enough to not be bored with these characters. The kills are incredible. I'm blown away by how far practical effects have gotten, prosthetics have gotten in order to deliver slasher kills that are shockingly realistic the kind of things that could not have been accomplished back in the 1980s, frankly. And there is one kill that's undoubtedly an all-timer. It is an insane, unbelievably creative kill scene that I've never thought about before. <laughs> undoubtedly never crossed my mind that a movie would ever do that. And it does. And I thought it was an, an ambient, relaxing experience, but also horrific in all the ways a slasher film should be. I highly recommend In a Violent Nature. Now, for the only thing I didn't like about the movie, it's undoubtedly true that the final 15 minutes are the least entertaining part. The movie does shift a bit. 
And it does, again, push the audience to sit with something that almost feels pointless and think, what are we really doing here? And I'm not 100% sure what he's really doing with that, but I did love the final moment of the film where it really drives home the idea that Johnny is a force of nature, a part of nature. And it's what makes the title of this film so perfect. So it does have a phenomenal final moment. So let's go ahead and rate In a Violent Nature. Now for atmosphere, I'm going to give this a 10. Absolute perfect in terms of the atmosphere. It's the main reason you want to see this movie. I loved walking through the woods. I loved the sound design. I loved the lack of score and the realism, the immersion it creates. Absolute perfection. And this is an absolutely beautiful area of Canadian nature. Uh, just a gorgeous experience. Now for characters, I'm going to give this a six. Now this is undoubtedly not a character driven film for the most part. Most of this uh, score being this high is for Johnny because I think it sets up this slasher character so well. He is memorable. He's got a good backstory, a great look. The other characters are just effective enough to fill their roles, but it's not like you're getting interesting characters in this. It's very much begins and ends with that. But for story, I'm going to give this a seven because while there's very little going on with the story, it's so effective for what it's actually trying to do. Now, I actually went to see this with my brother, who's not a slasher fan, and he hated the movie. So I told you, it's going to be divisive. It's going to push some people away, but it's really going to bring some other people in. And he was talking to me about how the script is just nothing in this movie. There's just nothing going on. And I don't agree with that because I think the storytelling is small, but effective. And especially if you're a slasher fan, you're going to enjoy watching this very typical premise just played out in a different way from a different perspective. A fascinating deconstruction, which is why this movie with very little story is getting a fairly high score in this category from me. But for scares, I'm going to give this an eight. Now, a little bit lower because I was not personally scared, but I don't think that's what the movie is going for. It's not trying to give you a thrill ride. It's making you sit and stew in the dark reality, the slow reality of what actually brings you a thrill ride when you watch it from the other perspective. It's also horrifying at times. The kills are fantastic, so that is why it's getting as high a score in this category as it does. Wow, the practical effects just absolutely blew me away. So all in all, I'm going to give In a Violent Nature an 8. I love this movie. It's one of my favorites of the year, but if you want to continue talking about slasher movies, click this video right over here for a bunch of my recommendations of some underseen 1980s slasher films. The classic stuff that In a Violent Nature is jumping off of. You can also check out this playlist right over here for some of my other modern horror reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Give a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed it. With all that said, don't forget to enjoy yourself today, have some fun, and I will see you next time.